coming to Tadasan, right? Because we want to start every time off with Tadasan. Uh, I can't believe it. It's finally happening. I'm going to be on video on YouTube. I have my own channel now. It's so weird. I'm going to do the best I can. You guys know how I feel about getting videotaped. So please bear with me. And I'm sure this will be humorous at some point. I might be terrified for the first dozen. But other than that, <laughs> I'm sure we'll go back to laughing and humor. All right, let's come into Tadasan. Let's get into the middle of our mat or anywhere you are in your room or space. Make sure your mat's going long ways because we're going to go out into standing poses today. We're just going to do an hour of like kind of standing pose stuff. And then I'll get different videos of different things as we move on with props here and there if we have them. But I wanted to make today pretty simple so that way you can follow along without anything and not having to have anything. So again, let's come into the middle of our mat if you're not there yet. Into Tadasana. Reach down through the arms and lift through the armpits, lift through the chest. The first action, of course, you know that I like to see is our toe lifts because we want to make sure that the arches of the feet are staying strong. So let's all lift the toes. When you lift the toes, did you start to sweep backwards? If you're sweeping backwards, you know we're not using the hamstrings. We need to descend with the hamstrings. We need to bring five and seven towards each other. Lift the toes, squeeze five and seven. Lift the toes, squeeze five and seven. Where's five and seven in case you're not familiar with me? This is five o'clock. On the left, this is seven o'clock on the right. So we want to think about how these numbers are coming towards the bladder, and if the bladder or underneath the bladder, we call this six o'clock. So we're bringing these numbers of your deep transverse abdominals in towards the bladder. Lift the toes. You should lift your toes every day six to ten times. It's good for the health of our arch of our foot, right? Lift your toes. Excellent. Now the second part of this is what? Bend your legs. Let's take our fingers onto the top of our thighs at the top of the femur bones, and we're going to start to push the top of the femur bones straight back. As we push the top of the femur bones straight back, we're going to feel like we have some action that goes on in the top of the leg. Watch that it doesn't come from a click, click of the knee. You want to watch that we're not punching that bottom inner kneecap backwards. Bend your legs. Take the top of the thighs. Push the top of the thigh bones back as if you're going to make a pedestal for your buttocks. Feel the actual bone shifting back without the knee, click, click. Bend your legs. Good. Take the top of the thigh bones, push the top of the thigh bones back towards the hamstrings. I'm going to do some poses today. Deb, over here, my lovely assistant, will be modifying some of the poses too using blocks and different things. So if you need to, you can always modify with Deb. Bend your legs. And straighten from the top of the thigh bones. Start to see which leg you're leaning into. Which leg are you starting to sway or sweep off to? Good. From here, we're going to bend the knees just slightly. Put your hands on your glutes. On the right one first, let's start with the right one. We're going to start to squeeze for 10. Just that right butt cheek. 9. Release. 8. Release. Just that right butt cheek. Squeeze it. 7. Release. Six, release. Five, release. Four, release. Three, release. Two, release. One, release. Now the left side. Start with just the left side. Keep the knees a little bent so we're not locking and popping into the knees. Ready? And squeeze. Ten, release. Nine. Release. Eight. Release. Seven. Release. Six. Release. Five. Release. Four. Release. Three. Release. Two. Release. One. Release. So now you recognize that if there was a side you were sweeping off to, that was the side that was hard to squeeze, most likely. So you can practice some of those while you're at home for the next few weeks. So we're going to put all those together now. So bend your legs, lift your toes, see which side you swept off to. If it was that same side, you should be catching yourself now. You want to try to work on the, abdom or the abdominals and the buttocks. They can help you, right? You bring five and seven grits of bladder, bring your glutes onto your body. So you get your foundation for your spine strong. Now, lifting your toes, fingers on the top of your thigh. Which glute do you have to apply a little bit more? Which one do you have to loosen up a little bit? 
Stretch your toes further forward as you're putting them down, and then straighten through the top of the thighs. Excellent. Reach your arms down. Take a nice deep inhale. Reach your arms up. Good. Exhale. Stretch your arms out. Stretch your arms out. Stretch your arms out. Good. Inhale. Arms up. Good. Exhale. Reach your arms out. Reach your arms out. Reach your arms out. Reach your arms out. Good. Reach your arms up. Inhale. Good. Exhale. Reach your arms out. Reach your arms out. Reach your arms out. Now let's try to do our Corona V, whatever it is, 19 virus test, right? So we're going to inhale, reach your arms up. We're going to hold our breath for 10 seconds, and then we'll release on the exhale. They say that if you can't hold your breath for 10 seconds, or you feel like you cough or feel strained afterwards, then maybe you're having some respiratory problems. So this will keep you in check, right? To see what you're doing. So let's try this. Ready? Take a nice deep inhale, reach your arms up, and hold. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Start your exhale. So that can be your little test every day to see how things are going for you. Interlace your fingers, reverse your palms, tips of your thumbs are touching each other, and reach the arms up. Try to imagine that the palm is becoming flat to the ceiling. Get away from the ears, try not to hug in on the ears or squeeze the neck, spread your collarbones. Even bend your elbows if you have to. Some of us are hypermobile and we can just throw ourselves out of our joints. So this might be a good time with the world showing us to slow down, that maybe we have to back off and slow down too sometimes. So maybe you want to bend your elbows and just work on trying to feel like you're pulling your arms apart. Everybody try that. Bend your elbows a little bit and feel like your fingers are stuck in those little Chinese uh, finger game things, right? And start to pull your fingers apart with them still stuck and watch how the collarbones spread. Watch how the shoulders spread. Now as time goes on, you'll start to stretch your triceps. You'll start to lengthen your triceps and squeeze them onto the arm bones. And that's what will start to make the arms straighten out. Not because we start squeezing into our neck and our throat. Push the pad of the hand up. Feel your back ribs lifting, lifting, lifting. Where's that six o'clock? Apply that six o'clock. Okay, up and over your pubic bone. Get it onto the pelvic plate. Good. Reach the arms out. Reach the arms out. Reach the arms out. Reach the arms out. Nice job. Switch the interlace of the hands. So if your right finger's always on top, take your left finger on top. Reverse the palms. Tips of the thumbs touching each other. Reach your arms up. Maybe if you're hypermobile like me, where you just throw yourself out of your joints, just start here. You bend your elbows, you pull your hands apart, try to push the pad of the thumb up higher than the pinky side of the hand. You try to feel like you're widening your position between your neck and your collarbones. And then you start to extend the arms. Then you start to squeeze the triceps onto the arm bones independently. If you're tight, you're probably just thinking about lengthening from your bottom rib all the way up to the heel of the hand. Like, can you match the bottom of the rib with the heel of the hand? Can you push that towards the ceiling to create more and more space for your center body? Good. Reach the arms out. Reach the arms out. Create space in the center of the chest and the center of the back. Nice. Let's try a little balance, okay? So you can always hold on to the wall. You can put your fingertips in the wall if you need to. Otherwise, you can lift your arms out to the side. Now, how do we lift those arms up? Not from our shoulders and our traps, but from our triceps, underarm, right? So imagine again, drop the arms and push them up from the triceps. Good, let's shift our weight onto the right foot, and we're gonna lift the left leg till our knee is in line with our hip. I recognize that I probably shouldn't have black clothes on. Oh well, I'll get better with that. Ugh, ready and point and flex. Never wearing white pants though. Point and flex. Point and flex. You should point and flex your feet, your ankles. You should stretch your feet every day. This is a good time for us to be doing stuff like this, right? Because you can be sitting around your house and just get some good points and flex. You can, if you're with quarantine with anyone. You can have them rub your feet, right? One more. One more. Good job. And release. Nice work. So whoo, maybe we need to give the arms a little break. So it looks like from my modifier. So anytime you need to modify, please feel great. All right. <laughs> All right, ready? Next side or other side, ready? 
Press the triceps, lift them up. Good. Shift your weight onto your left foot, but don't hit your hip out, right? We're just shifting some weight over there. Lift the right leg. How do we lift the leg, you guys? We've learned in my classes a million times. Hamstring and abdomen. They pull the femur bone up until you're in line with your hip. Point and flex. Point and flex. Point and flex. Remember, if you lock the standing leg knee out, you're not going to get any muscle building in the top of the thigh. You're going to have joint strain. So we want to unlock that knee and use the top of the leg muscles to control the balance. Good. Oh, too bad David's not here. He can be counting for me. David is he here. Is here. here. Uh, I know you're here, but I didn't know if you could count for me. <laughs> and release. <laughs> nice job, guys. All right. So this time, we're just going to reach our arms down like they're lightning bolts. So we're going to squeeze our triceps onto the back of our arms. Good. And we're going to do a little triangle pose just to kind of warm up a little bit, right? So reach your arms up. Good. For some of us, we're going to walk our legs apart. If you want to jump them apart, you can. Ready? And jump. Or walk them apart. Good job. Ready? Now, like you have ankles in your hips, I want you to pivot to the right and pivot. Good. Now start to reach the body out. How do we reach the body out? We don't let this butt come out, right? We have to squeeze that glute on like we started class. So bend your back knee, put your hand on your glute, and start to squeeze your glute and straighten your leg from the top of the femur bone. Not because it starts to pivot you backwards, but because you're squeezing your glute on and pushing your thigh bone back you're going to create stability over here on the back leg. Now reach out. Reach way out. Way out. Way out. Good job. You can place your hand on your shin. You can use a block if you want to. You can use a chair, right? If you have shoulder issues, you can do a dip like Pep is doing. You put your hand on your hip. Well, she loves. So you put your hand on your hip and you can roll the chest open from where? Where would we roll the chest open from? Good. From these bottom ribs too, right? From the chest. You're going to roll around the rib cage. So we want to think about the right bottom rib and we're going to bring it around. Not this back hip. This hip is pointing towards the tail a little bit. We're squeezing this butt on. Good. Reach the inner thighs. Stretch the inner thighs apart like you're going to stretch your yoga mat in a quarter of an inch, right? Ask your inner thighs to move towards your big toe. Move towards the outer heel. Good. From your arm, from your abdomen, pull the arm to bring the body back up. Nice job. Pivot your foot forward. Pivot your feet to the left, like you have ankles in your hips, right? Good job. Now first, bend your back leg, put your hand on your glute, so that we're really trying to set up the foundation first. We're not locked into the knees for our hypermobile people, my people who are really tight in your glute right now, you gotta try to loosen up a little bit there. Others, we have to squeeze the glute on and push the femur bone back. Whether you're tight or mobile, everybody's got to push this femur bone back. Our society has a sit, so it's always pushing forward into the body. So push that femur bone back. Good. Reach arms out. Really reach forward. Lengthen, lengthen. Don't let this butt come out. Don't let that turn into John DeVolta out there. Then reach, 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 and then drop that arm. Wherever it feels comfortable. And if your shoulder's bothering you, you put your hand on your hip. It's fine to have your hand on your hip. In fact, sometimes this is even nice because it helps you to push the hip head down towards the heel so that you have even more stability. And it might be easier for you to take this left rib and start to turn it towards the sky, right? Otherwise, you use your arms. Where are you coming from? The center of your chest. You're going to press your pec all the way up to this middle finger. Try to take it off of the sternum. Don't let this side of the chest start to collapse towards the earth. Push it up towards the sky, up towards the sky. Squeeze your glute arm, send your inner thighs long. Like think about trying to stretch your yoga mat another half of an inch and feel that come from the inner legs getting long, the back of the hamstrings getting long, the quads and the outer line of the leg are coming up. So half your circle is moving up, half your leg circle is moving down. Nice job, guys. Just a few more seconds. Take a nice deep inhale through your spine. Grow out of your pelvis. Exhale, rotate your ribs open. 
Rotate your ribs open, good. Pull from the arm, pull from your belly and lift. Nice job. Turn your toes forward. Now you can use the information that we've learned in January when we were working on abs. We have one and 11 and two and 10, moving down into our feet to bring your heels up. Then in uh, order to use our toes, we have to use five and seven, right? Because we're grounding into the heels to lift the toes. So we have to use five and seven, five and seven. One and 11, five and seven. One and 11, five and seven. So we get back to our Tadasana. Reach down through the arms. Lift through the armpits this time. So let's take our fingers underneath our armpits here. And instead, especially my mobile people, watch me, we're instead of throwing ourselves forward, where our ribs are over top of our toes and our butt is back, we want to feel like we're trying to, trying to go straight up. We want to feel ourselves trying to lift our ribs like we have little strings on our middle fingers and they're being dragged up towards the ceiling. Relax the chest skin, relax your face and your jaw. Do this action from the armpit skin, from the center of the chest, maybe the mid back a little bit, right? We're using all those muscles there. Hold that up for just a few more seconds. Trying to imagine walking around your house like this today every once in a while. Good, now take your arms, reach them all the way up. Good. We're gonna do an ankle rotation before we get into the next standing pose. So as our arms come down, we don't want to throw them forward where our back rounds off. We want to pull the arms back into our sockets. It's almost like you're retracting back from your armpit to your bra line as your arms come down. So that you're engaging your mid-back. You're hugging your bird wings in. We call these bird wings, right? So you're hugging in your bird wings as the arms come down. Are you ready? Shift your weight over to the right foot. Take the left leg and lift it. You can interlace your fingers around your shin bone or you can go to the wall. See, my person is modifying you going to the wall. All right, now from here, let's rotate our foot around in a circle for eight, seven, six, remember your bird wings, five, four, three, remember, two, quality is better than quantity, one. So we want those circles to be deep and round. We don't want them to be fast, right? We want them to be really working through the entire ankle. All right, ready? Now the other side, same thing. We're gonna reach our arms up so we get long and tall first from our side rib. So we're gonna really reach up. When the arms come down, we're not gonna let our back grow off. We're gonna try to keep ourselves as tall as we can from our armpits. We're still lifting up, lifting up, lifting up. Lifting up, shift your weight over to the left foot, grab a hold of the right leg, good, and rotate around for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now, what did we learn this month when, um, at the beginning of the month when we were actually in class? We'll get better balance if, just like the beginning of class, right? We lift our toes, we find where the metatarsal ridge is, we move the femur bone back, and we squeeze the glute. We apply five and seven. So everything we started the class off with will be applied to the rest of the routine, right? All right, so let's come back into our tadasan, get all those things back together again, right? Lift up nice and tall from your armpits. Squeeze your five and sevens towards each other. Take six o'clock, lift it up over your underwear line. Take 12 o'clock, have we talked about that yet? No. So let's add 12 o'clock now. 12 o'clock is here at the bottom of the sternum. We're gonna bring it back to the vertebrae and lift it up underneath our ribs. So as we bring it back and lift it under our ribs, and then we have six o'clock coming up and over, we have five and seven coming across, Squeeze our glutes, push our thigh bones back, lift our toes, find our balance. Good job. And then we're going to reach down through the arms. So give me one second. Erin, there's some kind of message on the thing. Is it okay? Okay, Do you, can they still see me? Oh, we're going to have to edit this part. All right, ready? <laughs> so reach down through the arms. Good. Take a nice deep inhale, reach your arms up. 
Good. Bring your hands down in front of your chest. You're going to walk your legs apart like dead, or you're going to jump them apart like me, whichever one you're working on. Bend your knees if you're jumping. Out we go. Good job. Now, just like at the beginning of our standing poses, we turn like we had ankles in our hips. So create the mobility from your hips. Pivot to the right. Now, you know I love side angle, right? But what is the worst thing about side angle? It's moving with your body and your leg. And we never open up the inner thighs. And if we open up the inner thighs, we can help our neck attachments, right? So if we want to help neck problems go away, we have to be efficient about what we're doing here. We don't just let it come with us, right? You have to leave this one behind. We're working on this this month. We've been talking about this three to four inches above the upper inner knee, sucking onto the femur bone. So suck it onto the femur bone, bend your front leg. How are you bending your front leg? Do you remember some of you guys who studied with me in February? We start bringing this leg bone back into the socket. Retract. Imagine that you're taking the bone into the socket and start to split your sit bones. Imagine that your sit bones are trying to move away from each other as this leg comes back into the socket. The three to four inches, what do I call this? Baby koala bear. Take your baby koala bear and suck it onto mama koala bear. Reach your arms out. Now, Deb is going to put her forearm on her thigh to modify. I'm going to try to touch the floor. So you have options here, okay? We're going to go up, though. What is here? This is on the side of our clock, right? This is the right side. So it's 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. We want to feel like we're making that clock as long and tall as possible. She's going to bring her arm onto her thigh, and I'm going to try to bring my hand down. Now, as I'm bringing my hand down, I'm bringing it behind my leg because I want to try to open up the chest. So I'm using my baby koala bear on the inside of this right leg to push my arm and my elbow back. Good. Now, from here, I'm going to keep sending my right sit bone to the back of my knee. You want to feel this action moving to the back of the knee. What's happening back on that left leg? Inner thigh is lifting. Inner thigh is lifting. Now, the arm in the air, you're going to start to turn the tricep. Where do you turn the tricep from? From the shirt sleeve. So rotate from the shirt sleeve and then reach from your clock. What clock number is this? Two. So we haven't talked about this yet, but two o'clock is at the bottom left floating rib. So you move that over to your finger. Take your hip. This hip bone is four o'clock. You're going to push that towards your heel. So as that arm is coming over, your four o'clock is going to your outer heel. Your two o'clock is going to your middle finger. Two o'clock is going to your middle finger. Woo! We're probably ready to die now. So squeeze that butt, squeeze that right butt, squeeze it four, squeeze it three, squeeze it two, squeeze it one, pull from the arm, pull from the abdomen and lift. Straighten the leg slowly by zipping the outside of the leg up to your bum. Pivot your foot forward. Woo! Feeling good. All right, just like you have ankles in your hips now. We're going to pivot to the left. Ready? Pivot. Nice job. All right, now here, first action, baby koala bear. Three to four inches of this leg, trying to move up onto the leg bone. Mama koala bear. This leg right here is trying to suck back into the socket. So as you start to bend this leg, you're going to suck this leg back into the socket. Suck this leg back into the socket. What's happening here? Three to four inches. Three to four inches. Sucking on, sucking on, sucking on. Looking on, clearly my partner is getting tired. You can see she's like, I'm ready to go back over and hang out. Oh. What's these numbers? One through five. So we're going to get really tall, really tall. One through five, one through five. Don't let the legs start retracting back because you're going down. And you have to push your sit bone to the back of the knee. So if you feel like you're retracting on the way down, your inner thighs are pulling up into your body. Pay attention to the inner thighs and separate them like you're pushing your yoga mat apart. Like you want to send the yoga mat apart like we tried in triangle or chicken pose. Now from here, I'm going to take my three to four inches of this knee and I'm going to push it against my arm to try to activate my leg muscles to stabilize to keep this strong. Arm in the air, turn from the tricep. Go ahead and then reach from your bottom rib. Reach from the bottom rib. So that number would be 10 o'clock and it's moving to this middle finger. So 10 o'clock. Bottom rib, moving to the finger. Eight o'clock, hip, moving to my outer heel, moving to my outer heel. Good, and reaching. 
reaching those two spaces apart. But then what's happening with my left butt? I'm gonna squeeze my butt. Squeeze my butt one, squeeze my butt two, squeeze my butt three, squeeze my butt four, pull from the arm, pull up. Good, start to straighten slowly, pull like you're zipping up. Your outside knee to your outside leg. Turn the toes in. Nice job. Abdomen again, right? So you got your one and elevens pushing down, then your five and sevens. One and eleven, five and seven. One and eleven, five and seven. And these are good things to learn as you get older because they create stabilization for your foundations, right? So you might be able to just like, you know, take your leg and step it in and step it in, but it's really good to start to identify how your abdomen is moving down through your body into your feet. So this constant connection here as we age, right? We don't feel so woo, wobbly. All right. I have to get something to drink. I've never yelled at this much, so hold on a second. <laughs> Water break! It's good. I'm going for water. You want some? Yeah, Janet, drink your water! We get water breaks in my Parkinson's class. <laughs> All right, Erin, you're going to have to edit that. All right, ready? Woo! So what haven't we done? We haven't rotated our ankle in the opposite direction. Now, if you can't remember, because you're like, whoo, that was so long ago, that we just did the standing pose and coming back into that, typically no, yeah, typically no, yeah, go grab the chair. And if you yeah, have they need to see though, we can do it at home too. So, so um, typically if you're a flexible person, you are rotating your foot inward first. And if you're a tight person, you're rotating your foot outward first. So if you know that, you'll come back in and we'll just go from there. Otherwise, you'll start to do it and you'll be like, oh, I already did this. And then you'll just reverse the direction, okay? Deb is going to have a chair so that she can do them a little more efficiently without having to worry too much about the balance. So you're welcome to grab any chair. It doesn't have to have the back out. You can use your dining room chair, okay? You can use the edge of your couch. Just don't sit back in the couch. All right, ready? So we lift our arms up, and whether you're in the chair or you're standing, you're still going to use the information to lift this left leg by using your abdomen and your hamstring to lift you. So lift from the hamstring and the abdomen. When you come around with your arms, don't throw your back off. Bring your mid back in and bring the leg towards you. Now, we're going to start to go in the opposite direction of what you are. So I'm mobile, so I love to go inside. So I have to go outside right now. Eight, seven, whoop, six, five, four, If I can teach you anything, it's to take care of your feet and your psoases. Those are my missions, is to make sure everybody takes care of their feet and their psoases as we age. It's really important. All right, other side, you ready? So when we bring our arms around, want to try to watch that you don't throw it off. This is what we do. We're always catching things, right? So this is just a practice like everything else. We lift our arms, and every time we bring our leg up, we try to bring our arms in without our back coming off, without our back not having to be engaged, right? So all of this is just a practice. So of course, right, if it sucks right now, we'll just keep working in the direction of. So we bring our arms around, we shift our weight over to the left leg, we bring the right leg up from our hamstring and our abdomen, and then we start the rotation. What rotation did you do? We tried two, and we're like, okay, that's my favorite side, maybe you switch. Maybe you knew as you came in, like me, and seven, and you know you have to go outward or inward. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good job, and release. Woo. So now what we'll do from this one, 
as we're now through our angle rotations is we're going to move from triangle to side angle to triangle. Okay? So we'll do a little bit of an action now. So let's reach down through our arms. Good. Remember when we start to do some moving between the different standing poses, you can always put yourself up against the back of the wall, like put your back against the wall so that you don't have to worry about balance as you're moving. You can catch yourself with the wall to create a different muscle mapping. And sometimes we just need that kind of security, tactile information, things like that when we're in a learning process. Reach down through the arms, lift through the sternum like we did at the beginning. Send your inner thighs and your femur bones back and down. Good. Look at where the metatarsal ridge is of both foot, feet, and both foot. Yep. Oh, that's funny. It looks like a muffin, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, ready? Reach down through your arms. Good. Take a nice deep inhale. Reach your arms up. Exhale, bring your hands down. You can jump your legs apart. You can walk them apart. Why do we practice jumping? Because it helps the pelvic floor stay strong, right? You have to stabilize this belly to be able to jump apart. Good. Let's take the feet, spin them to the right like we have ankles in the hips. Nice job. What's the first action? We're going to bend both knees now, right? We did one on the last round. We're going to bend both, which means this inner thigh has to go towards the left. This right inner thigh has to go to the back, right? So you're pushing these onto their femur bones, but they're going in two different directions. They're still baby koala bears, and they're sucking towards the femur bone, the mama koala bear. Suck them on, suck them on. Try not to click the knees. If you think about how these muscles are sucking on, you should feel the glutes want to engage onto the bottom. Now from here, we're gonna reach out really long with our ribs, really long with our ribs, really long with our ribs, and we're gonna place our hand or our hand on the shin. You can put it at the top whenever we start to move into side angle. But right now, you can just put it on your shin bone. Don't push. You don't wanna overextend through the back of the knee. You wanna use the hamstring. So lengthen the hamstring, put your fingers on your shin. For some people who are hypermobile in the knee, you might want to even think your calf is pushing forward into your fingertips. Now from here, even though the calf is going to push the fingertips, at the top of the leg, you start retracting the leg bone back into the socket. You start retracting the leg bone back into the socket. So you're bending the right knee independently of the left leg just shooting with you. For some of us in uh, um, February, we were practicing trying to take our arm in front of the shin bone so that the shin could push our bottom rib forward more. So the shin could push our bottom rib forward more. And then we are taking the sit bone on the right, bringing it forward, forward, forward. Good. Turn your tricep and reach, 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 reach. Ah, oh, feels so good. Doesn't it? Nice. <laughs> Now roll that belly, roll the ribs up towards the sky. Now start to straighten the leg and see if you can keep your ribs moving forward. See if you can keep your ribs moving forward. Reach the arm up, straighten the leg. How are you straightening the right leg? Squeeze your butt, squeeze your butt four, squeeze your butt three, squeeze your butt two, squeeze your butt one. What are you doing? You're pushing the femur bone towards the hamstring. You're pushing the femur bone towards the hamstring. Nice, pull from the arm, pull from the abdomen and lift. Good job, guys. Pivot the foot forward. Woo! Good. Ready? Pivot to the left. Like you have ankles in your hips. Nice work. All right. So let's start the triangle first, right? So send your inner thighs. What are we going to do? Just like the beginning of class, bend both legs. This inner thigh is going to suck onto the femur bone. This inner thigh is going to suck onto the femur bone. So they're going in different directions. But they're using their same strength, right? They're sucking onto the femur bone. So start to grip those muscles onto the femur bones as our legs straighten, and you should automatically feel the glutes apply a little bit. And if you don't, then go in there with your brain and start sucking those butts on. Suck your butts on. Good. Now start to reach your rib forward. Reach, reach, reach. Good job. Take your finger to your shin. What do we talk about for hypermobile people? We like to push this all the way down. See how far that can go? That's not so good all the time. We have to use our hamstring instead of the back of the knee. Okay, so hopefully some of us are also practicing our knee cords, right? That would be a good practice right now. Good. Now, what's your next action? 
Even though you're trying to push your calf into your fingertips, you're taking your left femur bone and pulling it back into the socket. Pulling it back into the socket. Pulling it back into the socket. Good, push your sit bone, push your sit bone. Push, good, your calf is moving into your hand, your leg is moving back into the hip socket. Good, some of us in February try to get our arm on the other side so that it would encourage us to lengthen our left ribs. Lengthen and pull those ribs out of the pelvis. But if you want to do that, what do you have to do? You have to squeeze that left butt on and you have to lift that inner thigh on the right because we don't want to fall backwards, right? Now take the arm into the air, turn the tricep, turn the tricep, reach, reach, reach. Good, feel your side rib getting really long. Woo! Keep pushing your sit bone towards your elbow towards the outside wall. Good. Squeeze your butt. Squeeze your butt. Squeeze your butt. <laughs> nice job. All right, ready? Now try to straighten the leg. How do you straighten the leg? You gotta squeeze your butts and push your femur bones towards your hamstrings. And if you don't want your body just to pop up, and you want your fingers to just pop up, you got to really concentrate on how you're straightening the leg from the hamstrings from the hamstrings and the arm can start to reach up as the leg is straightening, the arm is straightening. Squeeze your butt. Good, just bend those inner thighs. Woo. Nice job, guys. Pull from the arm, pull from the belly, and lift. Turn your toes in. What are we gonna use? Abdominal identification, right? So now you have one and two o'clock, 10 and 11. They can move into the metatarsal ridge, Five and seven. 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 Yeah, good job, nice job. All right, so let's just do a little chest up here. Remember how we were just doing this with our fingers? So now, we're gonna take our arms, we're gonna bring them back behind us. If you bring them back behind you too fast, what happens is, is we throw the ribs and we hang out over top of our pelvis, over top of our toes. So let's drop the arms again. Lift from the armpit ribs. Engage six o'clock to lift up and over your pubic bone, sit onto the pelvic plate. 12 o'clock moves to the vertebrae and up underneath the ribs. Good. Now from here, extend the back of your tricep like it's a Ziploc baggie. And you're zipping it from the armpit down to the elbow. Zip it down, zip it down. Now, instead of trying to just crank the hands towards each other, imagine that you're using your bra and you're gonna shut it another notch. And if you don't wear a bra, guys, then just think about how you're trying to squeeze in there um, with your bird wings a little bit, okay? So, ready? So we lift our sternum, six, 12, apply. Arms are stretching down, now just start to squeeze your back. Squeeze your back, squeeze your back. Couple of options. You can hold on to your wrist, you can hold on to the thumbs. You can interlace the fingers. As you want to straighten the arms, the straightening of the arms doesn't come because you throw your ribs together again. The straightening of the arms comes completely independently of the tricep stretching down to your arm. Feel the tricep stretching down to the arm and keep the six o'clock and 12 o'clock engaged. So we're over top of our heels, over top of our metatarsal ridge. See if you can lift your toes. Good, lift the armpits. Take two more breaths into your upper chest. Good job, and release. Nice, we're gonna do a balance so we can do tree pose for a moment and we're gonna add all that stuff on together. Again, you can use your chair now to the side just for a little bit of balance. My lovely assistant will show you. All right, <laughs> ready? So, we're gonna reach down through the arms, lift the armpits in the chest, shift your weight over to the right side, lift your right toes for a second. Feel that whole metatarsal ridge. Now stretch your toes further forward as you put them down. So you have more of a base and foundation. You can be using the tennis balls and the golf balls under your feet like Rich shows you in one of the videos. Now you're gonna start to bend the left leg. When you bend the left leg, you're bending it only enough that you come up onto the metatarsal ridge. 
So for us hypermobile people, we have no problem just like smacking this up and laying into the outside of it, right? And tight people, they start to push their hip up, right? So try to feel like your hips are descending and you're just bending your knee by pushing into the metatarsal ridge from your abdominals up here, right? What was this? One and two o'clock. So one and two o'clock are moving down into the metatarsal ridge. You're squeezing the right butt like we learned at the beginning of class. You're pushing the right femur bone back like we learned at the beginning of class. Now you're going to squeeze the left butt to turn this leg. Squeeze your butt. Squeeze your butt. Squeeze your butt. A lot of us like to just whip this leg out. And what happens is, is when we whip that leg out, it turns our whole pelvis. And then we just switch and bring our ribs around. But then there's this twist that's happening in the body. And we're not really controlling the balance. We're not finding muscles. So we want to look at our hips. Think about them facing forward. Push down into the foot. Squeeze your butt. 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 Good. Then slide the foot up onto the calf, maybe. Never at the knee. We're not pushing here. The knee calf's only this big. And so your muscles in your leg are much bigger and stronger. If you go to fall, you can push your kneecap out of the way. We don't want to do damage to the kneecap, right? Part of my slogan is always, save the knee. So you have your calf and your foot attached. You can smash them towards each other. Feel them gluing towards each other. For some of us, we want to come up a little bit higher. That's fine. Try to get that heel and bring it all the way up into the inner groin. Feel like the heel is pushing the groin now. So for some of us, we use our groins around the clock. Ripping our neck, creating TMJ, things like that. This would be a good way to find out if your groin does all the work. You put your heel against it and make it get out of the way. And see what else in your leg is starting to work. Now from here, if you're comfortable, you can lift the arms and hold them out to the side for balance. That's fine. Maybe you want to turn your triceps and reach the arms all the way up from the side ribs. Maybe eventually you start to gather in your bird wings or your mid-back and that will bring the arms and the hands towards each other. The palms will hit each other, but that doesn't come because I just squeezed my neck and my ears. It came because I started to hug in my bra line. I'm hugging in my bird wings and then I'm pushing up. I'm asking my bottom ribs to push my index knuckles that are pushing against each other. So I'm trying to get this connection of the inside finger, the second finger to push my hands up towards the ceiling. My hands up towards the ceiling. And you should balance every day for like a minute. But now I'm going to have to pay more attention because now you guys have an actual clock. So I think I talked too long on some sides. I don't know. Good job. <laughs> and release. Good job. Release the leg. All right. So now the other side. So just lift your left toes for a second, see where the metatarsal ridge is, because that helps us with this kind of balance on this side. And then we push the right knee forward, but it's only so that we can set the abdominals down into the metatarsal ridge. So we're still creating balance, even right here with the movement. So start to hug five and seven towards the bottom. Maybe that will help a little bit. Reach down with strong arms. Sometimes when our arms are playing around, it creates an instability, an unbalance. So make the arms strong. Lift the chest, the sternum from where we were earlier. Now squeeze your butt. Squeeze your butt to turn the leg. Squeeze your butt to turn the leg. Don't let your hips and your ribs do the turning. Tell your butt to hug on. Tell your leg bone to come up into the socket, like side angle pose. This is how we can use some of the information from side angle pose. Bring your foot onto your calf, and then maybe that's enough. Maybe you might even just want to put your metatarsal ridge on the floor in your heel at your ankle. And then you push your heel and your ankle towards each other or you can send your ankle to push the heel upward. If you're somebody who collapses into the arch, you could think that your heel is trying to get pushed towards the sky from that ankle bone. These are all good tactile information to start changing your poses, to create more balance as we age. Then you can come up a little bit. Maybe you're like, that's good. I can go further than that. Never the knee. No, no, no. And then you come up, 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 and try to get that heel and put it up as high as you can towards the groin. And that way you can see too, is do you use your groin all the time? Right? Do you use that groin all the time? Now, you can lift your arms out to the sides. You can lift up from your side ribs. Push your arms up from your side ribs and your triceps as opposed to lifting them from your suspenders or your bra line. Right? 
And then from there, we're gonna turn. Where are we turning from? Right here, right next to the shirt. So we wanna take this shirt and we wanna turn our triceps, reach the arms all the way up. Reach the arms all the way up. Good, maybe this is enough, right? Maybe we're like, ooh, I'm getting up around my ear on that right side a little bit. Who knows? Good, maybe you wanna to start to engage your back. Maybe once you start engaging your mid back, your hands come together. If you felt like your arms started squeezing your ears, then you're not engaging the back. Maybe it's not time to have the hands together yet. It's okay. We're all moving in the direction of. Then you push up. You're going to go up with the front ribs, the back ribs, the side ribs. And this whole time, we're gripping our bum. And we're sending our inner thigh down past our foot. So right here, you're trying to send this down. You want to use the inside of your leg to push down and create that stability. Good, only a few more seconds. You can do it. And release. Good job, nice. So let's bend our legs, get back to our Tadasana. Lift your right toes, lift your left toes, stretch them out. Good, take the top of the femur bones and push the femur bones back. Engaging six o'clock, bring it up and over your underwear line. Reach down through the arms. Good, we're gonna interlace the hands again behind our back to lift our chest one more time. Then we wanna try to switch the interlace. So if you had your right finger closer to your bum, you want your left finger to be closer to your bum. If you held your one thumb in the good, now you have to switch your thumb. If you held onto your one wrist, you have to switch to the other wrist, okay? Ready? So we're gonna start by lifting six o'clock up and over the pubic bone. We're gonna try to take 12 o'clock back to the vertebrae and under the ribs. We're gonna lift our armpits, and then we're gonna start to engage our mid-back as we're zipping our armpits down to our elbows. So as we zip our armpits down to our elbows, we're gonna grab a hold, you're like, oops, that's my favorite side. So switch, good. And then instead of cranking your arms down and throwing yourself out and lifting your head and going to your mobility, you want to get back in there, find stability and length. Find stability and length. And maybe the length doesn't come yet, but we still create stability. So we're still working in the direction of. Good. Lift, lift, lift from the armpits. Good, feel your arms extending down. Six o'clock is lifting up and over. Send your three to four inches of your koala bears onto your leg bones. Feel your outer butts engage. Everything we've been working on today. Good job, and release. Woo, nice work. All right, ready for another standing pose? Ready, so what were we just doing that would be a good standing pose to relate to all that information? Maybe a little warrior one, right? Your breath in one, that might be good. So let's take a nice deep inhale, reach your arms up. Good, you can bring your hands down in front of your chest, walk your legs apart or jump them apart, whatever you're working on. Now, for warrior one, your cross one, if you want to, you can walk your feet in a hair if you need to. Otherwise, you know, you can still work on that length of the inner thighs. Doesn't mean the heel will be on the ground. On the count of three, we're all turning to the right with everything. Everything turns to the right, okay? So, ready? And that's our hips, our front leg, and our ribs and our arms. Everything is turning there. This leg is gonna be your stabilizer. So how do you make it your stabilizer? Lift your toes. Find your metatarsal ridge, stretch your toes forward. Good, use your three to four inches on your legs, suck it on, suck your butt on. What do I call this? Two shifts passing in the night, right? You're hugging those on. Then on three, one, two, three, we turn, right? So the hip comes around, the leg comes around, arms are reaching up. Now, we're gonna start to bend our leg a little bit. And if you're like, mm, maybe I should have moved my back foot in. Right now's your opportunity. You can move it in again if you need to. All right. Otherwise, you can just come up on the heel a little bit, which that creates a balance for you, and it will help us identify with where our metatarsal ridge is. So it's just something we're playing with today. Right? This doesn't mean it has to happen all the time. So one, two, three, we turn. What was the action? First, it's the length in the inner thighs, like you would do in triangle pose today. And then squeeze your butts on. Now we're going to try to remember what side angle taught us. We tried to bend this leg, but it drew our leg into the socket. While the three to four inches of this leg kept pushing up. Then we kept drawing this leg back into the socket. So for some of us, 
it might be good for us to take our right hand, bring it down, put it in the crease of the thumb, and as you're bending your leg, pull this back. Don't let this come with you as you're bending your leg. Pull the hip back as you're bending the leg. Pull the hip back, pull the hip back, good. And eventually you'll think about lift the bones. You only get so far. We might be able to go a little further in a second here. So now take your attention to the inner thigh of this back leg. Start to roll it over your hamstring slightly so you come up onto the metatarsal ridge of that back foot. Not too high. You see, mobile people, we can do all this stuff, right? We're not really trying to go too high. We're trying to be on the back of the metatarsal ridge with the legs separated. Good. Now start to pull that leg down back into the socket, back into the socket, send the hamstring long, send the hamstring long, send the hamstring long. Good. Now lift your sternum, six o'clock, coming up and over, 12 o'clock, up and back. Now pull your wrists up, pull your wrists up into your fingers. Good. Lift from your heart. Good. Separate the inner thighs. What's that three to four inches on this back leg doing? Suck it on. Suck it on. Suck it on. Good. Now how are you going to straighten this front leg? You're going to pull the outside of your leg up into your hip. Squeeze your bums. Squeeze your bums. Squeeze your bums. Squeeze your bums. Good. Turn back to the front. Release. Woo! That's a lot, huh? But you can start to play with that. You know, you can have your feet closer. You can make a little of water. You can come up onto your foot. You can keep your foot planted. You know, you'll see how you can start to play with that pose some more and more to keep getting more and more length. There's times where I just direct it from the quad, we're pushing the femur go back. That opens up the hip flexor and the belly more. Sometimes we do it from the back. So you pick where you want to work while you're at home during a sabbatical. <laughs> Reach your arms up. Good. On the count of three, we're pivoting to the left. Ready? And one, two, three. Everybody goes. Arms, hips, legs. Good. What's your first action? Do I have, I'm okay with this foot. Do I want to? To come closer. Do I want it to go a little bit further today? Am I playing with it? Where am I playing with it at? Take this three to four inches and suck it onto the femur bone. Suck it onto the femur bone. If you like your hand being inside the crease, take your left thumb and pull it back as you're bending your leg. Pull it back. This is going to be easier for us to sling down into because a lot of people drive. So this is a little bit lazier on the inside. So you got to be really adamant about how much this is going back. As you are sucking your leg bone in the socket, as you're sucking your leg bone into the socket, this is really stabilizing, stabilizing on that right inner thigh. It doesn't want to, but you've got to be more adamant. You've got to keep your brain there. Keep your brain there. Now lift, lift the wrist up off of the hips. And what were we learning today? Six o'clock is a stabilizer. It's not just falling to the floor, right? Twelve o'clock is a stabilizer. It's not just popping out to the sky. It's not scrunched back. We're trying to pull it in and up, in and up. And then we push our hamstring maybe another half of an inch to the back of the knee. Lift this inner thigh. Lift this inner thigh. Lift your heart. Lift your heart. Good. Squeeze your butts. Squeeze your butts. What are your butts doing? Hopefully your butts are working. Woo! Good job, guys. Reach your ribs up. Reach your ribs up. Good. Now suck the outside line of your knee to your butt. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Take your feet forward. Good. Reach your arms out. You want to try? I was concentrating. Hey, it's morning. good. It means we're normal. Yeah, like, oh my God. Press <laughs> down into your feet. Move from your abs. Now move from your five and sevens. Move from your one and twos, ten and elevens, five and seven. One and two, ten and eleven, five and seven. Good. Yes. So we're getting to that happy part sometimes when you're in and out in our class, and we've been doing a lot of standing poses where you come to spread leg, wide spread leg. You're like, ah, it's like the crossroad to get ready to do some other stuff. So when you see this, you're like, ha, ah, we're coming towards the end. So of course, you know, we only have an hour class today, so this is going to be where we're kind of heading. I want to stay on standing poses. So let's keep our legs. I have to be honest, I am hypermobile. So I don't have a lot of uh, proprioception, right? So I use my mat a lot. So I'm going to take one heel, I'm going to put it back at the edge of the mat, and then I'm going to walk my legs open to where I feel they're comfortable, and then I'm going to take my other heel to the back of the mat, because then I'm at least starting up. I hope the three people make the mat are more straight than me. So I look for that. 
Well, let's just see if one heel's hanging off and one heel's in front of it because we can still do stuff like that even though we're using a line. Now from here, if you're comfortable, you put your hands on your hips for a second and lift your toes. See if you swing back. If you swing back, then put some attention into what we learned at the beginning of class. Hamstrings down, five and sevens hugging towards each other. Lift the toes again. Lift the toes. Now, typically we don't sweep from side to side here when our legs are open. But you can, this is a nice place to learn some butt gripping because you can't squeeze your butthole. <laughs> Ready? So, on the right side, let's just do four. Ready? And squeeze your right butt cheek for four. Squeeze it for three. Squeeze it for two. Squeeze it for one. Good job. Left side. Ready? Squeeze it for four. Squeeze it for three. So you might find that this is easier. Squeeze it for two to not squeeze your butthole when your legs are apart. Squeeze for one. We try to do this in every position. We've done it sitting in chairs. We do it sitting on the floor. We do it laying down on our back. We do it from bridge pose. We've done it from all of our standing poses. You can always work these glutes to see what they're doing for you for stabilization. Now, from here, take your fingers around the front and start to draw a line towards your bladder. That's five and seven. So you're going to hold your bladder up the whole time you're going down. 12 o'clock, as much as I hate this because I don't eat meat, but it seemed to work for my students. There's a meat hook that drops out of the sky. It hooks at 12 o'clock and it pulls you up here, right? And as it pulls you up here, you're stabilizing from strong glutes. You're stabilizing your six o'clock as you come forward because you're holding it up. And you're, after, you're trying to pull it away from your underwear line. Away from your underwear line, away from your underwear line. Then you can touch the floor. Maybe you can't touch the floor. Maybe you have to just touch your legs for a moment. Maybe you have a chair in front of you or a coffee table. Or you have some Stephen King novels that you can put underneath your hands if you're not touching the floor. Now, if you can, you want to keep your hands at least shoulder distance, collarbone wide. Like don't close in. You don't try to get close because then this pinches your neck, right? So you want to open up the arms a little bit. Some of you guys have been practicing with me for a while. You know you're trying to bring the heel of your hand back in line with the heel of the big toe. So try to get that alignment there. Straighten the arms. Straighten the arms. It's okay if the heel of the hand comes up off the floor. That's okay. Just try to drag your ribs forward. Try to drag your 12 o'clock forward. Remember where we had that hook? Try to pull that forward. See if you're leaning over your heels. See if you can start to shift some weight onto the metatarsal ridges. Can you lift your toes? See if you can lift your toes and find that whole metatarsal ridge from the big toe to the pinky side of the toe. Stretch your toes further forward as you put them down. Straighten through the arms. Tell your arms to grow. Good. Drive your chest forward like you're getting ready to do cobra. Good. Drive your chest forward. Nice. Feel the tips of the shoulders moving into the body. Nice. Now, where are those three to four inches? Let's try that, right? You can look forward. You don't have to look at me. You can look right between your hands. Make the back of the neck long. Bend both knees. Good. Find those three to four inches on your upper inner knee. Find those three to four inches. Push the femur bones apart. Push the femur bones apart. Make them get long. Push the femur bones apart. Good. Bend your knees. Now, when you're pushing your femur bones apart, like you're getting on a horse that's getting fatter, right? And you're trying to not let the horse get wide. So your inner thighs are holding that horse. But you're pushing them out onto the bones. Pushing them out onto the bones. As that happens, feel your ribs dragging forward. Pull the ribs forward. Try one more time. Bend your knees. So instead of letting your bottom rib retract back towards your hips while you're straightening your legs, use your hands on the ground like you're going to pull that yoga mat between your legs. And drag your ribs forward. Drag your ribs forward. Drag your ribs forward. Good. If you want to, you can try to keep dragging your ribs forward. Some of you guys have been practicing for a while. Look up at that ceiling. See if you can see that ceiling. Since most of our actions today, we're trying to engage the back muscles. Let's engage them here. Good. And then slowly release the head down. Bring your hands to your hips. And lift from your heart and your abdomen. Hold your spine on the way up. Use your abdomen to hold the spine up as you're coming up. Good job. Ready? And heels. Go. Right? Toes from 1 and 11. 5 and 7. 1 and 11. 5 and 7. 1 and 11. 5 and 7. You don't have to do that every time. You can jump your legs back together too. But 
it's nice to get some foundation work of how you're drawing your abdominals into your feet, right? Let's stand up nice and tall, reach down through your arms. Then drop your chin to your chest. Come back to the center, good. Look to the right. The center, look to the left. Center, drop your knee to your shoulder. You should do your neck stretches every day, especially if you have a backup camera, right, in your car. Up and over to the other side, so you should definitely do your neck stretches every day. And back to the center. How can you do the next set of neck exercises and find out what's going on in the circumference of your body? So when you go to turn your head, if your body starts to sweep that way, you're not stabilizing this abdomen. So hold it in your back pocket when you go to turn your head. If you drop your ear to your shoulder and your whole body goes down, then you know you're not stabilizing this 10 o'clock. 10 and 8 have to move away from each other as you drop your ear to your shoulder. So start to use the stuff we learned at the beginning of the session. Foundation work, metatarsal ridges, femur bones, glutes, five and seven. It's like, what sways us around when we start to use our neck? Reach down through the arms, lift through the armpits, ready, drop your chin to your chest. If you sway backwards, that means you didn't hold your five and seven and bring your hamstrings down. So you'll do it again. Just look up and be like, okay, I'm going to do it this time. Five and sevens, pull my hamstrings down. Come back to the center. Good job. When we go to look to the right, see if your stabilization is in your left abdomen. Bring your left abdomen and turn your head. Good. Come back to the center. Nice. When we go to turn our head to the left, make sure the right app is stabilizing you. Turn your head to the left. Bring this right up up into your back pocket of your jeans. Seven o'clock, we call it. Come back to the center. When we go to drop our ear to our shoulder, remember how much space you're trying to create for what number? Nine. We haven't even talked about three and nine in this session, but we will. So don't squish out nine. Make nine look like Salvador Dali nine. Drop your ear to your shoulder and make this Salvador Dali nine. Good. Up, over to the other side. As we're going over to the other side, we need three o'clock to be really wide. Salvador Dali wrong. Come back to the center. So take a nice deep inhale, reach your arms up. Try not to throw your body forward. Try to feel like you're growing. From your bottom ribs, back ribs up, from your hips down to your outer ankles, down to your outer heels. Take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart, down from the third eye to the sternum. Don't drop your sternum to your hand. Tell your hands to lift your sternum. Good. Bowing your head towards your heart so that we merge the mind and the heart together, bringing compassion through our thoughts, and kindness out into our words and our actions. Namaste. 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 Thank you guys!